object also we remove our hand back right so brain sends the signals to our hand to remove the hand back because the object is extreme cold so how do this messages transfer actually occurs let's see because now you know the structure of a neuron these are the dendrites right these dendrites end in our fingertips this is where the sense organs are there right in our skin there are sense organs and the tips of the fingers say for example so the dendrites the nerve cells end near the receptors receptors are the group of cells which are sensitive to the environment right so here in the skin where the dendrites end there are receptor cells so these green color cells are receptor cells what are receptor cells group of cells which are present in the sensory organs so for example in the skin so these are the sensory receptors these are the receptor cells of the sense organs so immediately you have touched a extreme cold object then what happens then immediately receptors in the nerve endings trigger a chemical reaction then at the receptors at, at the receptors present in your edge of at the corners of your fingers tip of your fingers there are receptors those are the group of cells present in the sensory organ so these receptors trigger a chemical reaction so what happens when chemical reaction is triggered at these receptors because of this chemical reaction an electrical impulse is created this electrical impulse can also be called as nerve impulse so this electrical impulse is created in the dendrites of the cell body okay so receptors at the nerve endings initiate a chemical reaction so this chemical reaction creates a electrical impulse or a nerve impulse we can also say electrical impulse or a simple impulse or a nerve impulse this is created at the dendrites and now totally from the dendrites the electrical impulse passes to the axon and from the tail of the axon there are nerve endings so now the electrical impulse has been transported via the dendrites to the axons and then to the nerve endings so electrical impulse has been transported from dendrites to the axons and then to the nerve endings so after the nerve endings again a neuron follows up so we can say that neurons are like a network of cells which are neatly organized in our body so i told you there are millions of there are millions of neurons in our body which are organized one after the each other like a line so as the here the nerve endings end here again a single neuron starts right again there will be dendrites but then between the nerve endings of the axon and the dendrites of the other neuron there is a gap this gap or space is known as the synapse so there is a synapse or the gap where this electrical impulse cannot be transmitted in this gap then what happens again in those gap we have a chemical a protein so understood right after the nerve endings of the axon then the dendrites of the other nerve cell starts between this nerve endings of the axon and the dendrites of the next neuron there is a gap this through this gap electrical impulse cannot be transmitted this gap is known as synapse so in this gap there is a chemical a protein which will be released this chemical will again initiate an electrical impulse so in the synapse there is a chemical or the protein which is released in the gap and this gap again creates an electrical impulse in the dendrite that is how through every neuron to other neuron electrical impulses are transmitted and finally these electrical impulses end in any muscle or gland of the body okay and then they pass the message so now you have understood how messages are transmitted from the brain to different parts of the body clear right then these neurons which transmit the messages are of three types they are known as sensory neuron motor neuron and association neuron so what is sensory neuron neurons receive signals from the sense organs so here this neuron receives the signals from the sense organs or the receptor cells so that neuron is known as the sensory neuron what is motor neuron neuron sends signals to the muscles or gland so the last neurons will send signals to the neuro muscles or the glands of the body are known as the motor neurons then what is association neuron the neurons which relay signals between the sensory neuron and motor neuron so the signals are transmitted see sensory neuron is starting at the receptor cells near the sense organs for example tips of the fingers and then what is motor neuron where the last neuron ends giving message to the gland or the muscle so between these two neurons there is association neuron so association neurons relay the signals between 
sensory neuron and motor neuron. So these are the association neurons. So now we are understood right how a nerve impulse is transmitted. Receptor signals, receptor cells release a chemical which goes and creates an electrical impulse in the dendrites of the neuron. From the dendrites to the tail of the neuron, this electrical impulse is transmitted. That is the via the axon to the nerve endings. And after the nerve endings, after the nerve endings, there is a small gap, and then again a new nerve cell or neuron starts. This gap is known as the synapse. And in this gap, the electrical cannot electrical impulse cannot be transmitted. That is the reason there is some amount of a chemical protein present over there, which triggers a reaction again, and again an electrical impulse is created. And to the next neuron, the electrical impulse passes to the dendrites of the next neuron. This is how through a network of neurons. Electrical impulses are transmitted and messages are sent and received in the brain. So we are talking about nervous system and animals, right? So the next thing is what happens in a reflex action. Reflex action both human beings and animals have. What is the reflex action? Suppose if we touch a hot iron, immediately with a jerk we remove our hand back. Same way if we put hand in boiling water, with a jerk we remove our hand back. Then sometimes if we are fond of biryani, then with the hearing the word biryani, our mouth starts watering. That is also a reflex action. Then we all know that Pavlov's dog experiment. Pavlov used to ring the bell continuously whenever he used to give the food. Then someday, if he, even if he doesn't give the food and starts ringing the bell, the dog's mouth used to water a lot. So those are all examples of reflex actions. So here we are talking about the animal nervous system. So here we talk about the reflex action. So why do this actually reflex action takes place in animals and not in human beings? Because in the thinking ability of animals is not as fast and as the thinking ability in animals is not as that of human beings. It is not very coordinated and in a the thinking ability of animals is not as organized as that in human beings. And brain doesn't have a complex neuron system in animals, whereas brain has a complex neuron system to address the nerve impulse transmission of messages in human beings, right? Like that, animals do not have a complex neuron system, and the thinking ability of the brain is also not fast in animals. So that, so that is the, so that is the reason reflex action takes place here. So what is reflex? Reflex is a sudden action in response to the something in environment. Something is extreme hot, extreme cold, extreme sharp object. So when we touch all these things, the sudden response or the jerk what we give is nothing but the reflex. Then what is the reflex action? It is a special case of involuntary movement in voluntary organs. So immediately when we are touching the hot air, the jerk we are moving our hand back. Suddenly that is happening. That is an involuntary action with the voluntary organ. Hand can be moved voluntarily, right? But suddenly the change in that environment, change in the temperature, to the jerk, we immediately moved our hand back involuntarily. So that is what is reflex action. Special case of involuntary movement in voluntary organs. So what is a reflex arc? This is the diagram of a reflex arc. What is a reflex arc? See, it is the path through which the nerve signals involved in a reflex action travel. is called the reflex arc. All the nerves are involved right in this transmission of nerve impulses. So all these nerve signals are involved in a reflex action. How these travel explains reflex arm. So reflex arm what happens is see in normal human beings all the signals, all the nerve impulse, electrical impulse, chemical reactions, all these via the receptors they go into the brain. Then brain sends the message back. But this happens in human beings. But in not all in all the animals. In animals, because the brain is not as developed as that of human beings, and there is no complex neural network, and the thinking ability is not so much developed in animals. Because of that reason, there needs to be see this. This is all not developed. It will take a lot of time for messages to go and come back in a animal. So, because to reduce this time, we need some specialized tissue where the receptors, every receptor travels through the spinal cord, every receptor travels via the spinal cord to the brain. 
So at the spinal cord there is a nerve bundle where all the receptor nerves meet. All the receptors are the sensory organs, nose, eyes, ears, tongue and skin. From all these five organs, nerves go to the brain via the spinal cord and this one place of meeting of all these nerves is spinal cord. So this is the spinal cord. In this spinal cord there is a nerve bundle. Okay? Clear to here, right? So because the brain is not having a complex neuron system, complex good thinking ability in animals, what happens is there needs to be a, some special organ where the nerve, via the nerve the messages can be transmitted to the muscles, to the required gland. The do this, do that as a response. So understood right in animals, in animals to the brain via spinal cord all the nerves go. So spinal cord is one fine meeting place where all the nerves join. So here in the spinal cord, from the spinal cord the nerves are directly connected to the muscles so that the messages are very easily passed without the wastage of time in animals because brain is not much developed and the thinking tissue is not much developed in the brain. Thinking tissue is situated in the front part of the skull. So here in animals all the nerves are connected to the spinal cord. So whenever there is a trigger, whenever there is a stimulus, via the nerves, the message goes to the spinal cord and immediately spinal cord sends the message back. See, this is all what happens in human beings, brain does all this part. But here in animals, the spinal cord is doing this part because brain is not much developed. So there is a nerve bundle in the spinal cord which does all these actions known as the reflex actions. So, the reflex are passes at the level of spinal cord. So we are told you know, or there is a nerve bundle at the spinal cord to which all the receptor cells are connected via the nerves. So reflex arc passes at the level of spinal cord and signals involved in this reflex arc do not travel to the brain. So here because brain is not much developed in the animals, all the reflex actions are carried out at the level of spinal cord. Spinal cord only receives the signals, spinal cord only transfers the nerve impulses or the electrical impulse. That is what happens in the animals and this action is known as the are. So every action is controlled by the brain. On a brief note, the notion what we have is every action is controlled by the brain but reflex action is controlled by the spinal cord. Reflex action in animals is controlled at the level of spinal cord. So how does the signals flow in the reflex arc? See we have learnt about the signals flow earlier right from the dendrites, chemical reaction, then synapse but here what happens is from the receptor cells go to sensory neuron, then to relay neuron, this is the relay neuron, then from the relay, see, when you touch the hot object, sensory neuron carries the signals to the spinal cord, spinal cord immediately sends the messages back via the relay neuron and the motor neuron and then the signals reach the muscle, so brain sends the signal to the muscles generally, hands and legs, but here spinal cord is sending messages to the muscles, and then the muscles will act. That is the effector muscle here, effector muscle. And then you remove the hand from the touching hot object. Okay? So here spinal cord has sent the signal to move your hand from the muscle, hot object. So then the hand is made up of muscle, right? Then immediately you have moved your hand back. So that is what happens in the reflex action. On a brief note, in reflex action, things are controlled by the spinal cord rather than the brain and all the transmission of messages occur in the spinal cord only and these messages do not go up to the brain because in animals the brain is doesn't have any complex neural system thinking ability is less brain is not much developed in the animals that is the reason instead of transmission of messages in the brain the transmission of messages occurs here in the spinal cord spinal cord is the site of the reflex action reflex path okay this is about the what happens in the reflex action this happens only in the animals. Next, let's move on to human nervous system. So, the first thing in the human nervous system is human brain. So, actually the nervous system in human beings is of two types. It is known as the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system is again divided into two types. That is somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. 
these nerves are transporting blood to the different parts of the head. So they come out from the brain and transport the nerves to different parts of the brain. Whereas the spinal nerves, these are 31 in beds. They are situated in the spinal cord. And these brains, come, these nerves come out of the spinal cord and they are transported to different parts of the head below the neck. So near the neck region. So spinal nerves are 31 beds. They come out from the spinal cord and they are transported to different parts of the head. That is the lower part of the head, the neck part mainly. So these nerves are these nerves are transported to the lower region of the head. Whereas the cranial nerves come out from the brain and are transported to the upper regions of the head. Okay? Next, moving on to the autonomic nervous system. So peripheral nervous system has somatic and autonomic nervous system, right? So in the peripheral nervous system, let's see about the autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system has a chain of nerve ganglion which run around the spinal cord and controls the involuntary actions of human beings. It runs along the spinal cord. It is a complete network of nerves like a nerve ganglion. Okay? And this peripheral nervous system and this autonomic nervous system is again divided into two types. Sympathetic nervous system, that is sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. So what is the function of sympathetic nervous system? It helps in increasing the activity of the organs as per the need. So sympathetic nervous system increases the activities of the organs. Like if you are running or doing physical exercise, you need more oxygen, right? So this sympathetic nervous system increases the heart rate and the breathing rate and increases the activity of the body, right? Increases the activity of the particular organ. So now we understood, right? During running, the sympathetic nervous system, because the oxygen requirement of the body is increased, it increases the heart rate and breathing rate of the body. That is an example. Next, moving on to the parasympathetic nervous system. It is regarded as the nervous system which conserves the energy and it slows down the activity of the organs and it has a calming effect. How does it slow down? 